Ciao ragazzi, this is my Ortec MCK84. With 75 keyboards being my favorite form factor, I thought that this will be a very interesting keyboard for you all to know. For a vintage 75% board, it has a rather gimmickless layout and I recommend this board over the more common SIRG Mini Touch. The only gimmick I can find is a layout with some extra keys to the left of the spacebar, and I'm not minding it at all. I think it's very good because I can finally bind an extra function key to the left of the spacebar because I frequently use it. I also bound a function key to the left side of the spacebar on my XC75, separate review coming later, as I use it quite frequently. It makes text editing easier as I bound the nav keys like home and page up and page down to the second layer of my arrow keys. The construction of the board is just meh. The board is held by screws, but the plate and the PCB isn't held by anything, but rather just sandwiched between the top and the bottom casing, which doesn't contribute as much to the rigidity as having the PCB screwed onto either side of the case. The plate itself is quite malleable too. I can't really show you because the plate is now secured onto the PCB, but when I was swapping out the switches, I was surprised by the fact that the plate was very, very easy to bend. It was really wobbly. This thin strap of plastic that goes between the function row and the bottom section is held by clips, so it can wobble a bit even when installed on the board. It's also quite thin, so be careful when disassembling. I recommend getting something thin and long to pry open the clips one by one. The black rubber feet here were installed by the seller I bought it from, but the white square rubber feet on the bottom are installed by default. There are flip out feet too. Pretty standard for a ball from this era. One of the feet squeaks pretty badly. I recommend lubing them in that case. I don't really use the feet, so I just kept them as is. This is a serial sticker, and it comes with a warning sticker too. The date on the sticker indicates that it's from 1999. The keycaps are mostly double shot, and the Japanese legends look really thick and sharp. The injection marks seem like Tai Hao. The front printing and the Japanese legends seem like they're pad printed. The weird thing is that on the modifier keys, all the letters seem like they use the same printing method, but some have injection marks while others don't. I'm suspecting that they might all use pad printing for the modifiers, but I can't be sure. They look remarkably the same. Look at these two alt keys. Can you distinguish what's double shot and what's pad printed? If you flip them over, you can see that only one has injection marks, while the other doesn't. However, the printing looks quite the same. It's really bizarre. Onto the switches. I swapped out the switches of this board to use Blue Alps. The board doesn't come with these by default, but comes with a variety of switches as per this article on the authority. I bought some Blue Alps switches from Mech Market, and this board was a perfect one to transplant them into. These have the perfect weighting to tactility ratio in my opinion. I've tried some other Alps and Alps clones like the Hua Ji clones, Simplified White Alps and Matthias Quiet Clicks which I was very disappointed in, but these felt drastically different. These had a somewhat longer drawn tactility compared to the other ones. I personally think abruptly sharp tactility doesn't always feel good. Hence the reason why I think Kale Box Shades and Navies aren't the perfect clicky switch, but these are really nice. The switch does have a decent amount of pre-travel, about 1mm and suddenly collapses. The tactility isn't as sharp as Box Shades or Navies, but more drawn out. I suspect that the switch plate contributes to the unique tactility. Seen by Hartar's force curve plot, we can see that there are two drop-offs, in which is imperceptible as two drop-offs when you actually press on it, but rather a longer drawn out tactility. It generates a very unique feeling. As a disclaimer, if you are looking for ALP switches, make sure that you are getting the SKCM series with the complicated switch plates. Any of the modern simplified clones will feel drastically different from these and aren't a good representation of these complicated switches. One thing to note is that for some odd reason, the switch can feel like it has much less travel than others. On paper, it says that it has 3.5mm of travel, but it feels more like 3mm. I suspect that it's because of the strong tactility, 
but they feel shorter than when I was using box jades, so I don't know what's up with that. The sound is really good too. I honestly think that the superior sound of the Alps SKCM switches don't come from the clicker, but rather the bottoming out noise. The click itself is low pitched compared to other switches, but the chunky thunk comes from the bottoming out noise. I use the TNZ to wire this into USB with Sora's firmware. There are only 4 pins you have to wire on the board, and Sora labeled them on his GeekHack thread. The TNZ website has the pinouts labeled so it's pretty straightforward. You wire the respective pins and wiring should be done. The link is in the description below for those who want to have a look. The next step is loading the firmware. This was the most problematic for me. The Ortec MCK84 is compatible with only one version of Sora's firmware, and it is 1.03. You have to download the .zip files for 1.03 and 1.10 both. I'll explain why you have to download both. The download link is in the description below. Now you have to download the Teensy Loader, which are also linked below. After launching the Teensy Loader, you have to press the physical button on the Teensy chip itself to put it into bootloader mode. The grayed out parts of the TNZ loader will then start working. Press the document looking button on the left and load the firmware version you want. In this case, it will be version 1.03 with the atmega32u4.hex file. After choosing the firmware, press the program button to load the firmware onto the board. Now the keyboard should start working, but this isn't done yet. There is one crucial problem with this keyboard. When any lock key is on, it breaks the keyboard. This includes the scroll lock key, and the caps lock key. I assume that this is a problem with the lock light, and I highly recommend that you remap these keys off. For caps lock, it's pretty simple. If the keyboard stops working, you can just unplug the keyboard, turn off caps lock, and plug it back in again. For scroll lock, it can be very problematic. I have the scroll lock remapped to something else on mine, so I can't demonstrate right now, but scroll lock will disable the keyboard as well as the on-screen keyboard on Windows, so you will either need another keyboard with scroll lock in order to turn it off, or reboot the computer without the keyboard plugged in to turn off scroll lock using the on-screen keyboard. Remapping is rather simple. Between the remap block and the end block, you'll have to put what the original key does on the left and what you want that key to do on the right. For example, my caps lock key is now the left shift key. If you want to assign a key to act as a layer modifier, you will have to write what key will be the modifier and what layer it will take you to. The FN1 key is taking me to layer 1 in this case. If you want to remap the keys on a layer, just add layer 1 between the remap block and the end block and do the same thing as before. When you're done, save the text file as a .sc file and go to the version 1.10 files. In tools, extract your respective version of the tools, and then drag the SC file you configured into the SCASWR file, and it will flash with the layout you want. Now you'll be wondering what these shanky keys like fake 08 and fake 03 are. This is why you need one more application before you do the whole remapping process. You will need to download an application called HID Listen. Link down in the description. Launch this app and start typing. You'll notice that these codes will start popping up. Now you will have to open up the version 1.10 files and go to docs and codes. You will then find this. For example, when I type the key next to my control key, it outputs this string of code. You just have to focus on the codes that come right after the plus and minus, which in this case is B2. Now you just control F and search for B2 on the codes page and you can see that it says fake 03. I recommend you checking the code of the modifier keys as some might output obscure codes. As a result, I've made a scroll lock into the delete key and my caps lock into the shift key. I put a lock switch onto my caps lock key so that it can act as a caps lock. 
For some reason, my scroll lock key and my pause key output the same codes, so I ended up with two delete keys in the corner, which I don't really mind because I generally don't use the key in this position, even on my other boards anyways. Another issue with the firmware is that you can't highlight text with the shift and arrow keys combination. I would say that it might be a bug in the firmware. If I press my pseudo caps lock key and press the arrow keys, the highlighting works. Then looking into this post, if you want to use other firmwares like QMK, the PCB schematic is shown and you might be able to create your own custom firmware. The link is in the description. Well, I think this is a very interesting board and possibly the best 75% Alps board option if you're into that form factor. Converting it can be rather tiresome and there are still a lot of bugs and limitations. However, as long as you get a work into your needs, I think it's a very nice board. Thank you for watching and this is a typing demonstration.